Oh, shalom again, brothers and sisters. Let us go forward with this teaching. We're in our 16th of sabbatical week, and it's known as Beshalach, um, Exodus chapter 13, beginning at verse 17. But we're going to, um, you know, retrace, you know, over the beginning part of the chapter with the matrix we just touched on in a previous uh, vid on the matrix and there's more on that from the Ethiopic perspective of what is the matrix because now we know we can be told what the matrix is with the Ethiopic key and the Ethiopic code now some some biblical let's still some biblical background on this subject matter mm. when we deal some biblical background we know that Musa, Moses, Moses wrote the first five books of what we know as the Hebrew Bible. And here we have some, some art right here because it's good to use um, the, visual, the visual art and facts. You know, use the art and facts wisely right here. Here's a, here's a, a, a mosaic type. This is a mosaic type from ancient Egypt, from the art and facts of ancient Egypt. So we have a mosaic type right here, Moses. And then we also have some of the other artists' renditions of Moses. We all are familiar with the Eurocentric um the Eurocentric interpretation, or we may say the misinterpretation of Moses, but in order for us to get a more historical and a more accurate image of Moses, we could either use and utilize this one that you might be familiar with. This is Moses right here, Moses parting the Red Sea. This is Moses parting the Red Sea. And then we can also utilize this one, kind of an interesting early Christian painting right here of Moses as well. Now there's some other images that we also have of Moses that we have used previous, but I think that will probably suffice for right now. We're going to touch on some of this as well. Now, the background of Moses, the context the the context of Musa or Moses is Egyptian. So let us let us understand that and recognize that the context of, of Moses, Musa, Moshe, is Egyptian and the context of Egypt is Ethiopic. So we cut to the chase by getting to our Ethiopic roots. What are the Ethiopic roots? Now we know that Musa, he wrote the first five books, or he is ascribed to have written the first five books of the Hebrew Bible, what's often called Torah. Now, we know that Tauret, Tauret also is Egyptian as well, and we'll touch on that. Some of you all are familiar with Tauret the so-called hippopotamus goddess, so forth and so on, from ancient Egypt. It goes a little bit deeper than that, but this is still the reference, the context is Egyptian. Now, what we also have is um, the famous four versions of his so-called lost original. Now, we said the lost original of Musa, of Moses, is the Ethiopic, but we have some very important clues even in the ancient Egyptian. When we put the context of the time in its proper perspective. Now, we have those four versions, which are often called the Yahwist, the Elohist, the Deuteronomist, and the so-called priestly, the priestly versions. Now, the oldest is said to be the Yahwist, the Yahwist version of the Bible. Some say that it was possibly written at the time of Solomon, which according to the Bible was 480 years after Musa or Moses 
all right? So that, that, there's that 480-year time period. Now, these are some of the basic elements that one should become more familiar with. To try to put it all together at one time can be a bit overwhelming. This is why in the Torah portions and our readings and feedings allow us to become familiar with the basic subject matter and going over it and keeping faithful to our studies and keeping the, the Shabbat or the Senvet, your Tekedeseh, set aside for such sweet meditations upon the word of Jah, Rastafar, upon the word of the King of Kings and his Christ. As his majesty, Adamawi Haile Selassie, reminds us, for my part, for I and I part, for our part, we must glory in the Bible. Now, there's said to have been, when we consider now the, the, the five books of Moses and the, and the four so-called versions, which according to European and Anglo-Jewish scholarship, they say these four versions are four versions of a lost original, but they don't really tell us what the original is like, but careful scholarship and studies point us in the Ethiopic, in the Ethiopic direction, but firstly, through Egypt. Remember, the, they were called out of Egypt, but the real root of the Yahweh's faith comes from deep in the now. Now, they said the oldest, the Yahweh's, was probably written at the time of, of Shlomo or Solomon, which according to the Bible was 480 years after Moses, and many say that it might have and most likely was redacted at the time of Ezra or Ezra. But what most don't know, and we have to thank an Ethiopian scholar and professor, um, Haile Haptu. I think his name is Haile Haptu or Haptu Haile, um, who wrote a, a preliminary to Ethiopic studies where he points out from Ethiopian sources that when the Israelites returned from the Babylonian captivity, that they did not have the complete um, Old Testament or the, the early books like Moses, and therefore they had to contact a, in a pure community of Hebrews, and that community was in Ethiopia since the time of Solomon and the Queen of Sheba. And they contacted the king of Ethiopia, the Hebrew king of Ethiopia, and there was an exchange of scriptures between the returned um, Israelites from the Babylonian captivity with the prophetical works of the prophets, many of them who spoke to the, to the captive exiles, and the, and the kingdom of David that was renewed in Ethiopia, according to Psalm 6831, Ethiopia stretched forth her hands to God. So we have this, this clear prophetic and historical connection between biblical Israel and ancient Ethiopia or, or Sheban Ethiopia or the Queen of Sheba, King Solomon, and the time after that, Ethiopia. And this is very clear. The Kibra Negest gives us more details and more reference and more points to study up on and to research there. Now, we know that the scriptures, the Masoretic, which is the traditional, the traditional Jewish version, the Masoretic, and Masora means tradition. Now, keep that in mind to remember how Christ would rebuke the Pharisees because of their tradition. And they wanted to know, well, where did he get such knowledge? And Christ pointed them to the fact that there were other sheep. You understand? And we know that there's another kingdom, a renewed kingdom of David in Ethiopia. So that exchange of scriptures between Isra and the king of Ethiopia and that Hebraic community is very important because this is where now we get the Masoretic and these questions about the, the Kare and the Ketab of the scripture, which is a, another, another subject matter, the, the, the Kare and the Ketab or the Ketab, how it's read or how it is, it is 
spoken, which is a, a, another area we like to get into. But let's just go through this because Moses' authorship of what's known as the Pentateuch or the five books for the Hebrews, it, it does not preclude the fact that Moses, when Moses was in Egypt, that he wrote other texts, that other texts might have also been written by this obviously and evidently learned and metaphysical scribe in the house of life. Now, the elite royal and well-educated Musa, he certainly must have commanded many languages. It's, it's very clear that he was a linguist or able to speak and communicate in many languages, the various dialects, the Afro-Shemitic dialects of that particular region, and also that he understood or overstood astronomy, ancient astronomy. Now, as a Medeanite, we must also recall that he became a Medeanite initiate right, a Medeanite initiate. Now, as a Medeanite initiate, or we can say an Ethiopian initiate, it's a Yahweh-net, that he was initiated and introduced to Ethiopianness. Now, most might want to know and should want to know, well, what is that? Now, there's a, there's a quote here. Let's see if we can get it. It's an interesting quote right here in the calendar by Nabur Id for Ethiopia, the kingdom of God, that actually points out, I think it's either this month's reading or uh, last month's, oh, here, here we go, it's, um, it's, it's for the Ameta Meheret, the Werche Taxis, or December to January, um, month is a footnote uh, for the reading and says the chop yawi malkets edek a yebarreko bechala. Let's see, this is uh, this is Abraham. It's actually Abraham. Let us move forward. Okay, here we go. It's for the Ameta Meheret, the Werche Tir, Zemene Johannes Wen Galawi, and Tir month, the month of Tur is January to February. It speaks of Musa Kagivit Be Sidet Wode Chop Ya Metito that from from Egypt when Moses fled, he fled to Ethiopia or to a province of Ethiopia known in the ancient world as Median. Known as Median, just like we have different states in the United States of America, but they're part of the United States of America. The English have a commonwealth. Ancient Ethiopia, Ethiopia was and still is and will be an empire of the King of Kings and his Christ. So, concerning Ethiopianness, he learned from Yoter or Jethro, Kamene Bechala, and after he Amen, after he came to to the Gnosis of the Amen, Ye Kahinun Sait Lij Siparan Agaba. In other words, he married the priest daughter. He married a daughter of the priest Sipara, 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 which we know as uh, Zipporah, Yamatuna Begocha Siat Ebik, Salem and Neho, and while he tended his his father in law's sheep, behold, Egizyarihir Tegelot Olet, that God was revealed to him, the true God was revealed to him. Yazazawina Hulu Be Mefet Amu Chop Yawinatina Mekabalu and all that he was commanded he did, he performed. He he Mafet Amu. He he was perfect 
in that which he was commanded, and all that the true God commanded him, and he received Ethiopianness. He received Ethiopianess, which is our divine heritage, Owen Honwa, and he became one, and, and this was the reality. He became one of the truly real ones in this world and the world to come. So in this world and the world to come, that Ka now, you understand, the Ba and the Ka was, was one. It was the Kaaba. You understand, the Kaaba. You understand, it wasn't Baka. Kazi, Ichop Yahweh Netu, Yetanesam. Yeah, and from this, due to this Ethiopianness, that that little by little, as it grew, as he perfected, that when the Muna, the Echitu was like Erek Israel his bedella in the Dereshbeta Tetzufual. So not just his brother, his his sister, but now the whole family, the Hebrews. The Ibrays, the Hibrays, which is the order of priests in ancient Egypt, go look it up. The Hibrays or the Hibrays. Musena, ye Israel, his, Moses, and the people of Israel, or the, the Hebrews. Gena, be midre, beda, sephro, salu, while they were still. While they were still in the wilderness, Yemik at Elna Leila Meshawa Itina Le Egiziavihir Bemak Rep, Sarate Kinetin, that they learned that, that, that they, they presented the burnt offerings, Yemik at Elna Leila Meshawa Itin, and other offerings Le Egiziavihir to the sustainer. Shirate, Shirate Kehinet, and now the order of the priests, the true order of Melchizedek, out of Egypt, from its root in Ethiopia, Selehiz Astadadarina Fite, and concerning the people, administration and justice, I said, At M, the Masa Tamar, that that this is what he gave the people. You understand? This is what now, now gave them justice. They, they didn't have any justice while they were in Egypt. Like the lost sheep, we don't have any justice in this spiritual Egypt. Only when we come out, only when we open, in other words, the matrix. Shur'ate menagistin, and the ordinance of kingship, Amatu Yotor, his father-in-law Jethro, Le Musena le Aaron le Hizbu Shemagele Wachemo Hulua Masayetu. That now we understand that it was Jethro, his Ethiopian or his Medianite father in law, which is very important in this initiation, in this groundation. Beg Dusat Metzahift Te Mezid Gabual. And now this is recorded in the Holy scriptures. So when we speak about Moses' father-in-law, the fact that he was a Medeanite initiate, we're saying that he was an initiate into Ethiopianet, into Ethiopianess. And he also, you have to remember that Heliopolis, or the Heliopolitan priesthood, is now the same order as that of Yosef as that of Yosef. So we have to, as, as we study this, we'll begin to understand that there were different priestical orders, just like there's different denominations within Christianity. You understand? But now, Joseph, this uh, Hili, Heliopolitan priesthood, and, 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 and being a priest of the same order as Yosef, Jethro was. Yoter was, Raguel, Horeb. These are his other names as well as the scriptures, documents for us. Now, Musa, he understood uh, Median and Medianite, which is ancient Ethiopian and Sabian and the Sabaean, the Saba, astronomy, which was perhaps, and from 
what the records tell us in ancient times, it was superior to the Egyptian astronomy because the ancient priests of ancient Egypt, especially during the dynastic phase, came from the headwaters of the Nile, from the roof or the heaven, the new, the Kui land, thus from Ethiopia, from the Tobia, from Ethiopia. Now, moreover, not only could Musa write his, his own customized version of our story, of history, embedding all the metaphysics and the codes, the divine codes, you understand, in Egyptian, but also we have to recognize that the foes of Moses and of the God of the Hebrews also would write or seek to rewrite their versions. Now, versions covering Musa's, Moses' personal life events and the political and the celestial situation, which is very important, become as parts of a big picture or a, a puzzle which must be assembled. And once it's assembled, it will begin to reveal the entire picture and the big picture. So my brothers and sisters, um, stay tuned for the next for the next portion of this where we continue where we continue to document the Ethiopic reconstruction of ancient Egypt and the Bible.